Greetings, everyone. Welcome back. This is M Dog. I'm gonna try to start getting some videos together. It's just been I had a really busy week this past week, and uh, may have another busy week this week. But I suspect that this week I'll have a little bit more time, hopefully, to do um, some videos here and there. So I wanted to talk about this spot out here at 124.65, and then just some general thoughts on, uh, especially PVA lately, the things I've noticed. Um, I've actually been on quite a streak of uh, not catching trophies lately. And it's probably just some, some randomness to that. Uh, it may be a reflection a little bit of what is going on at Amber. Um, but it may also just be some random some random stuff with me uh, in particular. I think plenty of trophies are still being caught at Amber. I just, I do think that it's been a little streaky lately at Amber. So so we are here at 124.65. Let's talk about that first. And I am casting a little farther left, clip 35 meters. So we're at 35 and I'm, clip far, I'm casting a little farther left perhaps than I normally do. Uh, I feel like a lot of times I'm aiming for, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm kind of aiming usually for like the discolored trees there. So more like at this, this, this angle. And I've just adjusted slightly left, uh, you know, no big deal. Might not even make a difference. I'm casting into slightly different area of the, of the spot that we're normally fishing here in this, from this location. But I've been using uh, mulberry and black currant baits for so long that um, it just kind of hit me tonight, man, I, I really want to try fishy. And then I was just trying to figure out what spot I wanted to try. Uh, Cause the other thing is I've been spending most of my time at the pond or on the north side of the map. Uh, Cause I felt like down here in the south part, it had really slowed down for me. It really had. Um, so like I haven't fished off the, the dock over here in quite a while. I know that a lot of people are still doing quite well over there, but it's just for me, it's felt very slow. Uh, bait wise, what I'm using is tuna 16 and salmon flavor purple with spicy salmon dip. And then one of the things with PVA that I did want to mention is I've been going through and just using old PVA stacks that I haven't used in that like, you know, I made a while ago and haven't used. So right now we had a couple of like half stacks of this salmon and tuna sort of combo. And that kind of fit with the baits that I was using. So I'm just using those older PVA. So I, and it's been kind of a good reminder. Like I feel like sometimes I get in this mindset of that PVA needs to be exact. You know, you see like, okay, somebody catches a trophy, whatever, uh, in a spot and you see what PVA they're using and it feels like, well, I need to use that exact PVA. Um, but I, I'm not sure that's actually the case, right? And it makes sense. I mean, it, it's probably not an exact thing. You really just need to complement the flavors that you've got on your boilies and, and, and you know, your, your bait package overall. Um, and, and then just kind of go from there. Um, I think there is some flexibility with PVA. Uh, it, it is definitely the case, like the wild carp spot at uh, Octuba. You know, so many people are fishing well, actually, the last two wild spot, wild carp spots at Octuba, so many people have been fishing those, right? And just getting so dialed in on what's getting the most trophies or the occasional blue tag or whatever. So much experimentation is, is happening. So much information is coming back that you probably can look and get a pretty good idea of, you know, fairly close to the best. But even that, you'll see some variety still, you know, because it's the, the fact is that 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 carp, the wild carp spot is just working. Uh, you know, you can throw a lot of different things in the water there and you're going to catch wild carp. The question is, you know, can you land on a bait and PVA combination that will catch you the highest percentage of, uh, of trophies or really nice wild carp with a good bite rate and all that. So, um, it's just been, it's been kind of nice to not feel like, Oh, I've got to create a new PVA every time I'm fishing in a spot like let's actually just use up some of our pbas so here's a little foreshadowing i i'm not sure if i'll get to it tonight some of it depends on the amount of silver i make because i'm still a little bit short on silver to get the last reel that i need but i'm trying to put together a, a video where i'm really going to fish with a range of starter uh reels 
for Amber with this Avia, which is the newest reel. And I've actually just used it a few times here. Um, and in fact, one of the really cool fish that I caught in this spot in the last few minutes was caught on that Avia. So that was a lot of fun. And it was quite the fight bringing it in, but it was, it was a really good time. So um, I, these, the second and third rod that we've got, I'm actually using the exact same bait combinations, right? Tuna 16 with those salmon uh, artificial corn and the spicy salmon flavored dip. And then uh, we've got the PVA, the, I think it's this one. See, even with this, like I've got multiple, I need to, I, I kind of do want to have the same one on both rods. Let's make sure it's the tuna salmon we're using. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's one thing I still like to do is keep the same PVA across all three rods when I'm casting to the same spot, at least. Um, and then real quick on the third rod, we're using the same dip and the same PVA, but I'm using two pop-up boilies, which I have gotten a little slower bite rate on this one, but it's been some nice fish as well, and it hasn't been too bad on bite rate. So uh, let's see. Let me kind of, kind of clear the bites here. We should be coming up to a little slower part of the day. The fish should get smaller. The bite rate should go down a little bit. So we should have a moment to kind of catch our breath and uh, and, and also have a, an ending point for wrapping the video up. I did not want to make a long video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this spot and, and really the PVA we're using. I've got both of my Megaras are being repaired. So I, um, I decided, hey, this is a good time to go ahead and pick up the Avia and... Uh, and then a couple other reels, but I'll let those be a surprise on, on the uh, when I get to the video series to get or the video uh, recording together on options for people who are first coming to Amber. Um, there has been some a good many juveniles, uh, common juvenile leathers, juvenile mirrors in this spot for me using the fishy bait setup, but also some pretty nice fish. Let's go ahead and look at the fish we've actually caught. Um, so the thing that I caught on the Avia, uh, the third rod was this, a very nice 18 kilo red Starvis mirror. Uh, and that actually did, uh, put up quite a fight for my Avia. It was a fun fish to catch. Uh, so weight wise, um, this is kind of how it has worked, but you see right here, we also got a common barbel trophy, which I'm excited because there's actually a cafe order right now for that. So we'll go turn that in. Also common carp ghost. So it's one of the cool things about fishy in this spot is it feels like uh, you've got, you've got, you know, the option of catching, um, by the way, the largest fish we've got is 20 kilo leather. So even though we're using medium sized boilies and corn, at least on the second two rods, we're still having a chance at a uh, pretty decent sized fish, but the leather, the bigger one did come in on the double pop-up, tuna 20, oysters 20. So you definitely still see that, the, you know, the overall trend that if you do double pop-up, especially at the 20 size, um, you probably over time do see a little larger average of fish. But there's just a lot of fun. We're using large one hooks. There's a lot of fun to be had and a lot of experiments you can do because you can also go with the corn and yet go with a really big boilie with the corn. You know, I've seen that some folks putting on like 24 size boilies, but then pairing in that with artificial corn and then catching some really nice fish. Or you can also play with your hook size a little bit. You know, so there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, you, you know, you don't just want to sit in a spot and just catch a ton of juveniles. So if, if that's happening, you might want to make some kind of adjustment. But this spot, for me at least, hasn't been just these. It's, it's, uh, I actually think that, you know, I, I don't know. We may still get one or two more decent fish, but we're definitely entering the time of day when I would say we're much more likely to see a much smaller average fish and a lot of, like, juveniles and stuff. So, um, But again, this has been a fun spot. I am not sure because we caught both rares on the, well, let's double check. I know that this came in on this, the tuna 16 salmon corn. Let's check on the common ghost carp. No, that was actually the double pop-up boilie. I was just trying to figure out like, is it worth having that double pop-up boilie? You can definitely have a faster bite rate with the one boilie and corn here. But if we're getting pretty good quality fish on that line, it's sometimes nice to at least have one line with double pop-ups. So I don't know. 
you kind of play with it. But it was, you know, during the early morning or even like in the evening, the bite rate and the quality of fish just goes way up. It's, it's really fun. It's nice. But that's probably not a surprise to you. If you've been fishing here in Amber, um, you kind of know that that's the case in this spot. It may still be that way over at the dock. I, I bet that if, if I went over there with the same like fishy kind of setup, we would probably have somewhat similar results over there. These are similar to the fish that we've seen coming out over at that dock at uh, 62 or whatever it is, 162. Um, but it's, it's also just fun to, I mean, we've, I've spent so much time using the, you know, black currant 20 or, or juicy mulberry 20 with corn or double pop up, you know, with the black currant or mulberry dip. I mean, I've just felt like that's been reliable now for a while and it's been good at times, but I'm not sure it's ever been great for me. It's just been good. It seems like it's been pretty steady and stable, but not, um, not always super exciting. So it's been fun to come over here, put together sort of a, a different fishy approach and, uh, and see some, some pretty decent results. You know, I mean, you could also put on the squid corn, you could get away from the salmon flavor at all. You go tuna squid, kind of like what used to be so good at the dock. Um, and then just put like a tuna dip, but I feel like the spicy salmon tip has been doing pretty well. So, um, I think basically all this shows is that there's still an active spot here for carp. Uh, there's probably a lot of different, both fishy and fruity flavorings that you could catch here. But with the fish, we're catching eyed and especially the barbel, which has been so nice. And we've caught barbel on all three rods. The trophy came in on, again, the double pop-up. So it's it, as, as much as it slows down on the bite rate, that's what makes it a little bit hard to completely get away from it. Um, because it has brought in some really nice quality fish. So we've got our Tagara here on the second line, and I'm actually using the Vinga on the first line, which I normally don't use that for carp fishing anymore. But I wanted to go ahead and get both of my Megaras uh, repaired up to um, a good place. And, um, and then we'll be... I'm pretty much ready to finish purchasing the other reel so that we've got all three for our sort of starter starter uh, starter set for for Amber. Not starter set. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how, exactly how to talk about it, but I think the idea of the video is going to be, hey, you don't have to go from you know alphas all the way up to tagaras for carp fishing, and I think most people know that. But let's look at three of the reels you might consider uh, to start carp fishing at Amber. And what kind of line, what size line might you want on there? What are the advantages, disadvantages to over uh, putting a stronger line on there than, than maybe you normally would versus just like having a less, less strength on the line but more, more line on the spool. So those are some of the things we'll be talking about and thinking about in that video. And Avia is definitely the more expensive one of the three. Um, I'm still going to keep it in that category because it's like less than half the cost of a Tagara. So it's a good bit cheaper than a Tagara. Not feeling like you have to wait all the way till you have silver for a Tagara to start carp fishing. This spot here is a little scary. You know, you do want to mind your spool size. <laughs> Um, cause you're going to have to slow the carp down because it's got plenty of room to run in a fishing in a spot like this. So, um, this probably isn't the best example of a spot that someone that was easing into Amber would, would first use. And when we're in that video, probably what we'll do is, is fish in the pond. It, I mean, that's definitely the safest, like best place to start off with. And, um, it happens to be really hot right now. Okay, so I think that's enough. I'm not going to sit here and just wait on this last rod to get a bite. It's been some really good fishing. So how long have we been here? Let me make sure we all caught all these fish here. Yes, we did. So just over an hour, 41 fish, not the like craziest bite rate, although 
there was probably six more fish that we caught that I turned into fish pieces because they were just too small, right? So it hasn't been quite this slow, but 41 in just over an hour is not bad for carp fishing, especially when you've got, you know, the chance of, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, people have caught leather trophies here recently, so that's a possibility. We weren't that far off on the red carp, so, and seeing the trophy barbel. Pretty decent commons as well. So it just seems like a good spot overall as you move around and try in different spots at Amber. This one's probably worth considering. Okay, I'm gonna try to get back on the train of videos. It's just been a little uh, a little crazy lately and I've neglected to get as many made as I typically like to. Um, so we'll try to pick that back up. But as always, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what your experience has been like at Amber lately and uh, I will try to get that, um, the other video that I mentioned uh, put together here pretty shortly. If not tonight, then sometime soon, just based on my silver, how much silver I have for that last reel. All right, I will catch you later. Thanks for watching. Peace out.